take a look. It's Ian Book, Slinging Rainbows. It's what some of you have been waiting for. Ian Book expected to start Monday night up against the Miami Dolphins. We're going to talk about how this has happened. We're going to talk about who Ian Book is and what the offense could look like with him at the helm. We got all that and a little bit of land yet for you on this emergency episode of Locked on Saints. You are Locked on Saints, your daily New Orleans Saints podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is good, Houdat Nation and Houdat family? Welcome into this emergency episode of Locked On Saints, your daily podcast covering the New Orleans Saints, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks, as always, for making Locked On Saints your first listen of the day every day. Don't forget, we're free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube as well. I'm your host, Ross Jackson, at Ross Jackson Nola on Twitter, Canal Street Chronicles, Locked On NFL, and here with you every single Monday through Friday on Locked On Saints. In today's episode, is obvious, right? We're talking about Ian Book, the big news, Trevor Simeon, Taysom Hill being moved to the COVID reserve list and Ian Book expected to be in line to start up against the Miami Dolphins on Monday night. So we're going to talk about how all of this happened. We're going to talk about effectively what it means for this team, and then we'll break it down a little bit more to kick off the show here. But first, I want to shout out Hudak Confessional, my good friend Deuce Windham, Matty Hudak, uh, for the cold open today because, you know, it was nice and easy to kind of be able to call back to that one. All right, so let's talk about what happened here. So as we mentioned, Taysom Hill, Trevor Simeon, who have each started uh, some portion of the last seven games for the New Orleans Saints have been added to the COVID reserve list. And that means that quarterback, rookie quarterback out of Notre Dame drafted in the fourth round of this year, Ian Book is expected to start on Monday night. Now, it's important to say that this is a fluid situation, right? Things are going to continue to change. We'll see exactly what happens. There's a lot of possibilities. Uh, and, you know, the, the NFL just changed over its COVID protocols and its health and safety protocols. And so now it's easier for players who are vaccinated and asymptomatic to make it back onto rosters within 10 days. So there's still a lot to see in terms of how this can all unfold. But here we are on Thursday, kind of hard to expect anything to really change unless it's a false positive for one of these guys or there's some other you know, peace to all of this within the next effectively five days. It is important to also mention that this might not stop here, not to be doom and gloom right off the top here, but it's reasonable to have these expectations that we are not sure that this is where it stops. We've seen Adam Troutman, Jawan Johnson, Trevor Simeon, and now Taysom Hill all added to this list over the course of just this week, leave alone Sean Payton being added ahead of the uh, game last week against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So there could be more names, there could be more players headed to the COVID reserve list. So we'll see exactly what happens here. But the way that this all sort of happened over the course of time, the Saints lost Jameis Winston, their starting quarterback, QB1 undoubtedly, uh, up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in their week eight matchup. He had the ACL tear. He is out for the season. Trevor Simeon started. They, the Saints went on a four game losing streak with Trevor Simeon. Then once Taysom Hill was healthy, because remember he had the concussion earlier on this season. He also had the uh, the other hampering or the other injuries that were hampering him. He finally got his first start up against the Dallas Cowboys. That ended up being the fifth loss in a row. And the Saints have now since then won two games in a row with Taysom Hill at the helm. Now Taysom, Trevor, both of them out, expected to be out right now for Monday night's game. So that leaves only Ian Book, who has been inactive all season so far as the only quarterback, healthy quarterback left on the roster. Now, can the Saints go out and sign another quarterback? Yes, possibly. But with all of the concerns around COVID, I could understand being cautious around that and bringing somebody in off the street. That could be a little bit sort of daunting at this time with everything that these NFL teams are dealing with. The emergency quarterback, the non-quarterback quarterback behind Ian Book is Alvin Kamara, who's been dying to throw a pass. But thankfully, you've got Ian Book here. And the expectation is that Ian Book is healthy. He's safe. Everything is fine. So with that being the case, Ian Book is expected to get the start on Monday night up against the Miami Dolphins. Again, things can continue to change. So we'll continue to keep you up to date with the entire situation as it unfolds heading into Monday night's game up against the Miami Dolphins. Now, one last thing that I want to hit before we get into who Ian Book is, is sort of the compounding issue here. You're changing over the quarterback and Sean Payton, the New Orleans Saints head coach, isn't at the facility during practices this week because he's still out with COVID himself. And it's very likely that he is still being held to the previous protocols. So it's very, 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 I keep using the words likely and unlikely, 
but it's unlikely that he's going to be back before Sunday, pretty much, which would be the 10th day since he was added to, uh, since he was out because of the positive test last week. So you have to prepare Ian Book now with guys like Ronald Curry and Pete Carmichael, which no problems there. I actually have a lot of faith in Ronald Curry, and I have a ton of faith in Pete Carmichael because no one knows the Saints offensive system better than Sean Payton. But it will impact a little bit about how the New Orleans Saints go about things against the Dolphins on Monday night. Does Pete Carmichael continue to call the plays since Sean Payton wasn't there for the install this week, although he'll be virtually involved in all of that? But because Pete Carmichael is there with him in person and helping to get him ready, is Pete Carmichael the one that ends up communicating with him and calling the plays on Monday since Sean Payton wasn't able to be there? And then Sean Payton takes over play calling duties up against the Carolina Panthers after he's had the opportunity to be with the team, installing the offense in in there for practice after that upcoming week. It'd be very, very, very intriguing to see how the Saints end up handling this with that compounding issue. You have a rookie quarterback starting, very likely. And you have a, uh, a a head coach that's probably not going to be there during the practice week. So, well, again, we'll keep you up to date on everything here as we learn more. But now I want to talk more about who Ian Book is, what he did in college, what it is that he brings. And we've got some help here, too. I'm going to show you a clip from an episode back in June with former New Orleans Saints quarterback J.T. O'Sullivan talking about what Ian Book brings to the team and what he does on did on Saturdays and how it can translate to Sundays. We've got all that and much more coming up for you as we continue on with today's episode of Locked on Saints. But before we get to all of that, I am absolutely on the edge of my seat to tell you about Stat Hero. Listen, I am the worst when it comes to season-long fantasy football. I love daily fantasy football. It keeps me engaged. Don't have to worry about being out of it by week eight, week nine of the season, which is kind of what happened to me in my season long fantasy issues. I told y'all I was bad. But when it comes to daily fantasy, there's no better place to do it than with Stat Hero. Stat Hero gives you the first of its kind because it allows you to actually see and select the lineups that you're going up against. So it's not like those other daily fantasy situations where you're going up against a bunch of faceless teams. You have no idea who anybody else selected. You're going up against millions of different teams, spreadsheet heroes, all of that. But now with Stat Hero, you can go one on one against the computer head to head the way that it was intended to be. And now you can see the winning, the odds of winning going up by four times with Stat Hero. So do not miss out on this. You can sign up for free right now by heading over to stathero.com slash locked on and use the promo code locked on so you can get a 100% deposit match. Once again, that is stathero.com slash locked on, promo code locked on for that 100% deposit match. Stathero.com slash locked on, and locked on is the promo code. Terms and conditions apply. All right, who that nation continuing on with this emergency episode of Locked On Saints. The New Orleans Saints are preparing Ian Book to start Monday night up against the Miami Dolphins, unless something rapidly changes in the course of this situation with Taysom Hill and Trevor Simeon being added to the COVID reserve list on Thursday morning. Ian Book should be your starter and your quarterback going into Monday night's matchup. So let's talk a little bit about who Ian Book is is. And first of all, sorry, let me thank all of you for taking the time to join us. I'm probably your first and your second listen today because we also have our crossover Thursday episode up with Kyle Krabs. So thanks so much for coming back and enjoying another episode of Locked on Saints under these emergency circumstances. So let's hear very quickly from former New Orleans Saints quarterback JT O'Sullivan. And in my opinion, one of the high, one of the best uh, quarterback minds all over the place. You can check him out over on uh, QB School here on YouTube or wherever it is that you get your podcast. So here's JT O'Sullivan when I talked to him back in June on Ian Book and what he did on Saturdays and how it could translate to Sundays. Uh, I would say a lot of the throws that maybe we've seen Drew Brees making the last few years would be mm-hmm. things that would translate. And, that, and what I mean by that is that's a nice way to say maybe not like the most powerful arm down the field. Sure. But what he does do it is very consistent. He's smooth. He's fluid in his mechanics. Those types of things that I think he, he's worked significantly on and improved upon. That coupled with the fact that he's probably a better athlete than Drew Brees maybe ever mm-hmm. was. That might be overreaching a little bit when Drew first came out. But post-injury, certainly, mm-hmm. uh, I, w- I would say that. So the, those elements are the things that I enjoy watching. Plus, he's – you know. I, there's a, a weird variable in all of sports, but specifically for the quarterback position, you know, how much do you put on winning – how much is the quarterback directly a result of that outcome? And he certainly won a lot at Notre Dame at a really high level for a really long time. And so I think that that plays a part in it, you know, whether, whether that can translate to Sundays, we'll see. 
There are not a lot of folks smarter than JT O'Sullivan out there when it comes to quarterbacks, in my opinion, one of the highest IQs when it comes to the position that you can just readily get information from. So make sure you go and check him out over at QB School over on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. Um, JT saying a lot of great things here in terms of his mobility, what it is in terms of what, what he brings as an athlete, as well as his uh, precision and, and, and fluid nature as a thrower of the ball. And I love what JT highlights that he's you know kind of made it nice, but not the strongest arm. That's not that's not unusual for the New Orleans Saints, right? Drew Brees did not have the strongest arm. Taysom Hill does not have the strongest arm. Jameis Winston was the exception. Jameis Winston has an absolute cannon for an arm. And so the Saints offense was sort of changing and and molding to support Jameis Winston to be able to take shots downfield. Same thing for Trevor Simeon, who loves to take shots downfield as well. One of them was more successful than the other for certain. But when it comes down to it, the idea that, you know, Ian Book can walk in here and not have the strongest arm and have success isn't really that wild to consider. So let's talk a little bit about who Ian Book is. Ian Book was drafted by the New Orleans Saints in this year's 2021 NFL draft in the fourth round at 133 overall. Lots of people were kind of surprised about this selection, but a lot of folks in the know, Mike Dettelier, for instance, over with WWL Radio, our partners over at Odyssey, as well as guys like Jim Nagy, who of course is the executive director over at the Senior Bowl, in which Ian Book participated They were not shocked at all by this selection because apparently the Saints have really been invested in keeping an eye on Ian Book for a while. So what did Ian Book do to catch their attention? Well, first of all, he's the winningest quarterback in Notre Dame history with 30 wins. He completed over the course of his career at Notre Dame 63.8% of his passes through for 8,948 yards. And then here's the key or one of the keys, 72 touchdowns to only 20 interceptions. That's a 3.6 to 1 ratio, nearly a 4 to 1 ratio in terms of touchdowns to interceptions. That is a big part of the Bill Purcell's model of drafting a quarterback. Do they have at least a 3 to 1 touchdown to interception ratio? Are they winners, right? Do they have a winning record? And then there's a bunch of stuff about how many passes, you know, better than a 60% passer completion rating, all of that. So you look at what Ian Book did while he was in college, and it's pretty clear that he did enough to catch the eyes of the New Orleans Saints, but not just as a passer. Remember, the New Orleans Saints have been very interested in mobile quarterbacks as of late. Taysom Hill, Lamar Jackson, these guys that they've really been connected to over the course of the last few drafts, even Baker Mayfield, I would throw in there. He's not a run first quarterback or a dual threat guy but he has mobility. So too does Ian Book. 361 rushes over the course of his time at Notre Dame, 1,500 yards, 1,517 to be exact, and another 17 rushing touchdowns. His senior year was very successful as well, completed 64.6% of his passes, 15 touchdowns, three interceptions, and then added another um, nine touchdowns on the ground as well. So he is somebody that caught the eyes of the Saints early while in college. Then he participated in the Senior Bowl. We know how much New Orleans Saints love the Senior Bowl. And then he got some reps in the preseason. Wasn't as successful in the preseason. Nine completions on 16 attempts, only 126 yards, one interception, no touchdowns. But you can see the tools. And he's somebody that Ronald Curry, quarterback coach, spoke very highly of. Uh, Sean Payton has spoken very highly of. Drew Brees has spoken very highly of. They love his work ethic. Said Ronald Curry mentions how he doesn't make the same mistakes twice. He's diligent and he's a sharp kid. So in terms of smarts, he should be able to be somebody that picks up the playbook pretty quickly. But that brings the question, why is it that we haven't seen him active on game day? Could it be because of the number of quarterbacks that they already have? Or is there something that they're concerned about with Ian Book and his ability to grasp the playbook? I think that's less likely. And I think that maybe this could be closer to a best kept secret situation where they didn't want to put him out there so quickly and they didn't want to get him out there his rookie year and potentially harm him in terms of his confidence long term. But now this is a situation to where everyone's on his side and no one's going to evaluate him based on how he performs in this emergency situation. Another thing that kind of takes the pressure off of the young quarterback here is that it's a non-conference opponent. So it doesn't really kill the Saints playoff odds if they lose against the Miami Dolphins. It makes it tougher. It makes it so that they need a little bit more help from the other bottom of the AFC or NFC playoff teams. However, the Saints could still finish with a nine and eight record with two wins at the end of the season and push their way into the playoffs, depending upon the performance of the Miami Dolphins and the Philadelphia Eagles. So it doesn't really like condemn them if they lose this game. So Ian Book coming in to get his first start on Monday Night Football is the pressure, not win so that the Saints can get into the playoffs kind of pressure, thankfully. So let's talk about what this New Orleans Saints quarterback situation, New Orleans Saints offense could look like with Ian Book at the helm as we continue on and wrap up this emergency episode 
of Locked On Saints. And I know we probably have a lot to talk about between now and then, absolutely no doubt about that. But Super Bowl 56 is right around the corner over at SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles. The one thing that we can talk about right now for sure, though, is that you probably want to be at the Super Bowl. Everyone would love the opportunity to be at the Super Bowl. And there's one place that makes it uh, accessible and makes it possible. And that's on location, the NFL's official hospitality partner. They're going to give you the opportunity for a once in a lifetime Super Bowl ticket and experience package. All you have to do is head over to the website where you can select the exact seats that you want to pay for. No raffles, no contests, nothing like that. You can pick the exact seat where you're going to sit, and then you can choose from a bunch of really incredible elite entertainment packages as well, including an exclusive pregame uh, celebration with NFL legends, uh, five-star LA hotels. You can even get food prepared by the great Wolfgang Pucks. If you want to learn more about this, head over to onlocationexp.com slash SB56 for more of that info, or you can search Super Bowl on location. Once again, that is onlocationexp.com slash SB56, or simply search Super Bowl on location. While the New Orleans Saints were expected to be minus three favorites at home up against the Miami Dolphins on Monday night, according to betonline.ag, but expect that line to move. You want to keep up with it? Bet Online is the best, fastest, and easiest place to get in on all of your sports action around the New Orleans Saints, around the NFL, NBA, MLB, whatever it is that you're interested in, or I guess MLB upcoming, but NHL, all the other things that are in action right now, you can go and check it all out over at betonline.ag. The, the over-under for this game was already supposed to be the third lowest in the Saints last 15 years at only 38, but with the new rookie quarterback starting, could that potentially creep down? And could we be watching a historic moment in terms of the New Orleans Saints over the last 15 seasons? You'll want to keep an eye on all of it over at betonline.ag. And if you're a new customer, don't forget to use the promo code Locked On L O C K E D O N for that 50% welcome bonus. Let's say you put $100 down, you get an extra $50 on top of that. Once again, that is promo code Locked On L O C K E D O N for a 50% welcome bonus at BetOnline, where the game starts. Let's get it. Houdat Nation wrapping up today's episode of Locked on Saints with a look at Ian Book. So a big piece of this now that I want to talk about is what the New Orleans Saints offense will look like with Ian Book at the helm. And honestly, I don't know if it changes too much from what we've seen over the last couple of weeks. Here's what I mean by that. The last couple of weeks have been big time defensive showings for the New Orleans Saints. Last week up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, obvious example of that. Uh, you know, they shut out the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, won the game by simply kicking three field goals and the offense effectively just making sure they didn't generate any mistakes, right? They didn't commit any mistakes, any turnovers, create advantageous field position for Tampa. They just basically tried to play as error free a game as possible, even if that meant a few three and outs where they just ran the ball and made sure that they took time off the clock. Up against the New York Jets, you saw them a little bit more aggressive in the passing game, but still only threw the ball 21 times in that one, 14 times between zero to nine yards. The condensed offense in the passing game, I could certainly see the Saints going that route again. Now, I have to rem- I have to remind, and we have to say, we don't know if there are going to be more players on the offense that end up on this list. It's already been two tight ends, two quarterbacks. We saw it kind of impact the defenders a little bit last week. We saw it impact the running backs a couple of weeks ago. So. Definitely something to keep an eye out on because we don't necessarily know what this offense is going to look like in terms of availability going into this game. But if they get the key pieces, right, uh, Marquez Callaway, if, if Nick Vanette ends up staying, you know, active and, and available, Alvin Kamara, if they can get guys like Teron Armstead and or Ryan Ramchick back, then that ends up being a huge benefit, especially with a rookie quarterback, right? Good, good pass catchers, uh, tough tight ends that can make catches close to the line of scrimmage. And uh, a, a good pass catcher out the backfield and Alvin Kamara, as well as somebody that can give you a run game behind that rookie quarterback. That becomes really, really important. And we should expect, no matter what, to see Mark Ingram there because he tested positive weeks ago and so should be within the whole uh, immunity portion of all this. I don't know the correct phrasing, but it, it puts them in a situation to where they should at least be able to have an effective run game. And if they can just get a tight end that can be available near the line of scrimmage, and that gives your quarterback what you need. Them keeping it condensed between zero to nine yards two weeks ago against the New York Jets is exactly what I would expect them to do in terms of the passing game up against the Miami Dolphins here this week on Monday night, if Ian Book is indeed the quarterback. Again, ever-changing, fluid situation. But the other piece of it is you can do a lot of the same things with Ian Book that you did with 
Taysom Hill. Obviously, there are some exceptions, right? Taysom Hill's not going to lower his shoulder and pull over a linebacker or a defensive back, right? You're not going to see that happen, or not Taysom Hill. Ian Book's not going to do that the way that Taysom Hill did. But you can move the pocket with Ian Book. You can run those sort of speed outs. You can run the boot action, the naked boots, those those situations, which the, the, the boot actions, play actions, the uh, naked boots, those give you an opportunity as a quarterback to scan the field and see more of the field and give you more time, especially if you're, you know, the offensive line is struggling, which hopefully won't be the case. And hopefully that's a place where the Saints can actually get healthier this week. We'll see. But if you move the pocket, if you get him going to where he's mobile, that puts him in a situation to where he's comfortable and has the option to use his legs. We talked yesterday or earlier today, actually, with um, with Kyle Krabs of Locked on Dolphins, who explained a little bit about what the Miami Dolphins do with Tua Tunga Vailoa in the RPO game, which is flooding concepts to one side of the field, giving him um, you know, short, intermediate, uh, 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 deep options, right? Giving him uh, flood concepts as well as levels options over on one side of the field to where he effectively makes a read. And depending upon what the key defender does, he's able to make a decision or he throws the ball away or runs. And I think you can do the same thing with Ian Book. Now, you want to be careful having him run too much. You don't want him to get too mobile because if you lose him, then you're using Alvin Kamara as your emergency quarterback, right? Depending upon what the Saints continue to do at the position. But what this offense looks like with Ian Book is pretty similar to what it's looked like with Taysom Hill over the course of the last couple of weeks, particularly that New York Jets game. I can see a lot of those concepts repeating themselves and coming in, minus the aggression that you saw early on up against Tampa where they were taking those deeper shots down the field. But do I think that, they'll, that they won't take a shot or two with Ian Book? Yes, I think they absolutely will and would and should. But I could see a lot of this offense remaining condensed one side of the field, close to the line of scrimmage, and operating through the run game being sort of the number one focus in this one. So expect a run-heavy approach, but also a moving quarterback all throughout this game to give him an opportunity to see the field and make decisions quickly, right? Make de- make those quick decisions. And we'll see. Do they continue to have Pete Carmichael call the plays, who I thought did a good job with Taysom Hill last week? Because Pete Carmichael will be there with Ian Book and communicating with him more consistently over the course of this week than Sean Payton will be able to do, that would make sense to me. I could see the Saints doing that. So how comfortable he can be with the offense is going to be a huge question. How comfortable this offense is with him is going to be a huge question. But if they protect the ball and show up in those two or three key moments that change the course of a game, the New Orleans Saints can still win with their fourth quarterback this season if you count Trevor Simeon coming in late against or early. Uh, against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in winning uh, a couple of weeks ago. So here's your chance. Sign up for the book club now, right? Get in, get ready for the hype. Because if Ian Book comes in and wins a game on Monday Night Football, it's going to be wild. So uh, we'll keep you up to date with everything around this situation. Ian Book, the Miami Dolphins, all of it here on Locked on Saints with your daily podcast. We're not stopping here, right? We got a lot to talk about. So we'll be back tomorrow with more on Friday to help you get ready for this matchup. And then, of course, Monday with our uh, game day preview up ahead of the Dolphins game and probably over the weekend, depending upon what happens, right? I know it's Christmas, but we'll see. We'll see. I appreciate y'all, as always, for coming through and for making Locked on Saints your first listen of the day. Happy holidays to everybody. Don't forget to check out Locked on Bets. Win yourself some money this holiday season. Help with those uh, folks that are doing maybe some late Christmas shopping or anything like that, you want to check it out with your boy Q and handicapping expert Lee Sterling. As always, for everything around the New Orleans Saints in between these episodes, make sure you follow me on Twitter at Ross Jackson, N-O-L-A. Hit me up. Let me know how the family's doing. Let me know how you're living. Let me know how you're mom and them. And trust you, that nation, I'll holla at you.